Hello everyone, it's Carrie, and in today's video I'll be doing a face-up video with final photos at the end. I'll be working on a doll I made for a group show we did in the Doll Artist Collective on Instagram entitled Masquerade Ball. I believe the base doll for this is an Ever After High Faybell Thorn, but I'm not completely sure. If you know what it is, let me know in the comment section below. I store all of my dolls in a box and uh, all of my stock dolls in a box and, or a bin, and I lose track of who they are. <laughs> So let me know if you guys have any idea who this character is. So like I mentioned, this is part of a set of two dolls I made for the Masquerade Ball Show with the Doll Artist Collective on Instagram. For the other doll, I chose Cerise Hood because they seem to have the same or very similar face sculpt in just different colors. So I thought that would be an interesting pair. So I decided to just film this one since the face-ups were very similar that I chose to do on them. If you'd like to see the other doll or more photos of both of them, you can follow me on Instagram or you can check out the Doll Artist Collective and it's called at the Doll Artists Collective on Instagram and I'll put that in the, the comment section or the, the uh, what is it called, description box below. Myself and three others in the collective have a show that runs through August 3rd, I believe, and we did dolls interpret, all interpret, interpreting the theme of Masquerade Ball, and there's some other gorgeous dolls that were made by these brilliant artists and friends, and they have, most, most of them have sold, but there are a couple left, and this one in particular has sold, but my other doll, uh, in the different color Valentina is also available is still available at the time I'm making this video uh, for purchase through the show and payments plans are available for her so while I'm not sure the reason I'm not sure that this is Fabel Thorne is because I thought Fabel Thorne has more of a white sculpt um, and this one was more of a lavender and so I'm kind of pushing that lavender a little bit further by adding some purple for the shading and contouring. So for her eyeshadow effect, I'm using this uh, e, a Pearl EX, I believe it's called, or Pearl FX. And it's not super hev heavily pigmented as much as I'd like, uh, so I kind of had to build the color. And then I'm giving her more of a smoky eye using the purple. So these dolls, I made masks for their faces. I used Warbluff for the base of the uh, the mask and then covered them with a uh, different laces. And since they were going to be wearing masks, I knew I, I have you know the, th the three-dimensional eyelashes that I adhere to them and I didn't want the mask to uh, kind of crush those lashes. So what I did was made, made the eyes like they were partially closed and that way two things could happen. I could make some really neat eyeshadow effects and uh, also they, the eyelashes would go through the holes in the mask easier. So I'm just giving her like a smoky eye starting out with the purple and then uh, blending in some black at the very corners. So her lips, I wanted them to be a kind of pale compare in, compared to the other one that I made. You'll see the photos of her at the end, but uh, the other one I made uh, kind of bright lips and this one I wanted them to be a little more pale. So I started out with a yellow base and worked from there. And the yellow base was really just for a highlight. And then I started adding in some gold. So there I was trying to use a Faber-Castell uh, watercolor pencil. I, I use, uh, um, very often I'll use Faber-Castell 
Art, Gr Art Grip Aqua Rowl. And that's one of my favorite pencils to use for like the fine lines because it has a very, sh I can sharpen it to a very fine point and it stays sharp more so than many of the other dolls or uh, <laughs> more than more so than many of the other pencils that I use um, because it's a little bit harder, but it still has a good pigment that picks up pretty well on the vinyl. However, I find that using the regular Faber-Castell uh, watercolor pencils, they don't show up very well at all. <laughs> I, I struggle with those. I have a very small set. I think I only have like, um, I might have 12, but I don't even think I have that many. And, um, but every time I attempt to use them, they don't work. But that doesn't mean that they're not a great pencil because, um, you know, we use watercolor pencils for something that they're really honestly not made to be used for. So some of they could be a very, very quality, very high quality watercolor pencil, but just because it doesn't work on the face up doesn't mean it's not a good pencil. But so I, I, I would suggest um, Faber, regular Faber Castells for if you were doing a painting or watercolor painting with pencil, watercolor pencils, but not for face ups. And there's my trusty Art Grip Aquarelle. All of my supplies are in the description box below, but also there's a link to my Amazon shop uh, storefront. And what that is is uh, where all of my supplies are listed and you can uh, kind of click on them or I think hover over them to see what I use the products for. And so it's, it's a handy place to see the, my pro the products that I use as well as get some information on them. And that's in the description box below. And if you do purchase from that link, I do get a small commission too. So thank you for those who have purchased. So some of these techniques that I'm doing with shading and highlighting, they are uh, more detailed um, in some of the tutorials that I do for Patreon as well as uh, Skillshare, my Skillshare classes. I want to thank the many people who have been tuning into my classes on Skillshare. I currently have two classes on Skillshare. One is a rerouting class with yarn and the other is a face-up class and both are beginner classes at this point. I am working on releasing a second or a third class for intermediate skills, but um, if you're not familiar with Skillshare, it's a forum for creative learning and the classes are broken up into short, easy to follow lessons. I've been taking a lot of classes there myself when I can and I'm just loving learning like water more about watercolor and um, color theory are some of my favorites. And in the description box below, you'll find a link to Skillshare where if you sign up through that link, you'll get two free months with no obligation to continue. And um, I'm currently, like I said, working on a new class with some more intermediate techniques so that'll be out soon so thank you for those who have um, done that two two month trial and I'm gonna try really hard to get that new class out so before your two months is up you may be able to get to that class as well so I'm using Karen Dosh for the iris of the eye and mainly I'm doing that because um, I wanted a gold pigment for in the eye, like a golden brown. And the other pencils that I have in that color don't pick up as clear and don't the pigment doesn't show up as strongly as it does with the Caran d'Ache. I'm also adding some purple in there and blending it in with white. So I know that you guys like to see more of the process, like the costume making and the hair, and I tend to uh, like to only film the face-ups mainly on my channel. However, I do have some of those bonus features in some of my future videos. So if the face-up isn't your cup of tea, don't worry. Um, I do have some of those videos that will come uh, that I'll be showing here and there. And I should be saying on the thumbnail whether or not it's a full process.
So here obviously I'm doing a lot of uh, detail work on the eyelashes, trying to sh do some shading as well as adding some individual hairs. So I was trying to get her features to look a little bit different. I like to push the limits of my face-ups. I know I get often told that um, you can tell one of my face-ups immediately when you see it, and I, I love that. I love having the fact that I have my own style. That means a lot to me. I love hearing that, and thank you so much, but then that also pushes me to try to do different things so I can have some more unique face-ups and not constantly do the same face <laughs> so I try to do different expressions and uh, just kind of change it up a little bit so I was happy to do these two with the the interesting eyes So before I go, special thank you to my patrons, and if you guys haven't already, make sure to check out a couple videos back where my patrons and I did a group challenge, or a group collaboration, and it was called Monster Mash, and we all made these fun dolls uh, with our interpretation of Monster Mash, and so make sure to check that out and wait till the end of the video as well to see all of their beautiful creations. Um, Oh, and here's some bonus footage. I did show a little bit of the skirt and costume that I made. Sorry, sometimes once I get to the editing, I don't, I don't, I completely forget what I had actually filmed. <laughs> so this was uh, the co pieces of the costume for each of the dolls. I made them very similar. One of them was more uh, pale than the other, or if, uh, of an ivory, just because it looked a little better with the skin tone. And here are the final photos. And thank you again to my patrons and thank you guys very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, I'd love it if you gave it a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. I hope you are all doing very well and have a wonderful day. Thanks again. Bye.